There is no guarantee for success, but there are ways to get closer to it when you do the right things. Who you surround yourself with is just as important as what you do. Finding the right people, the right classes, the right activities, and taking the right tests are all decisions that shape your future. Find out more today on Destination University with Dr. Cynthia Cologne. Dr. Cologne and her guests will give you the tips you need, whether you're a student, parent, or educator. Now, here is your host, Dr. Cynthia Cologne. If your child attends a public or Catholic high school, chances are they're already five steps behind. I know, that sounds really harsh, but it's true. And you know how I know it is because I worked at a private college and recruited across the country. And I'm telling you, you're at least five steps behind your private school counterparts. But by the end of this, today's episode, you and your family will get closer to that elusive level playing field. And be sure to stay tuned until the end because I'm going to share how college admission decisions are made. Yes, I'm revealing exactly the process we did when I worked at Vassar College, so stay tuned to the end. Hello everyone, I'm your host, Dr. Cynthia Colon, TEDx speaker, college admission strategist, and author of the book, Be Committed, Get Admitted. Welcome to Destination U University. Now, I've taught over 10,000 students from public and Catholic high schools across the country. I've helped them get admitted to their dream colleges. And today I'm sharing how to increase your chances of getting admitted to top colleges as well. Sound good? I'm gonna give you four tips that every family must do immediately to get closer to that dream. Okay, so I'm gonna break this down. I'm gonna start with tip number one. This is a tip I reveal so much, I can't share it enough on the mountaintop. So the first tip is to get a copy of your high school profile, okay? Now, if you don't know what that is and you're like, well, uh, you're not alone. Most families I meet, including those I work with privately, have never heard of what the high school profile is. So don't worry. I go into much deeper and, and a deeper dive into what it is in podcast episode number 193. So be sure to watch that video as well. Okay, the high school profile is a document that shares with the colleges the demographic information, the um, honors and AP information, the SAT scores, ACT scores, all the quantifiable data from your child's high school. It also gives a grade distribution. It tells me where, which colleges students from that high school have been admitted to, et cetera, et cetera. It is the college's Bible. That's what we use to understand the context in which the student or the applicant comes from. So that's what I'm getting my information. I can find out how many honors and APs are offered at the school in comparison to how many that the student or the applicant has taken advantage of, okay? So lots of information there and you wanna start there. Now, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go and Google the high school name, your high school name, plus the word school profile. For example, you're gonna type in Palo Alto High School School Profile. Now, in theory, it should come right up as a PDF form, but if it does not, sort of you can hunt around. It should be on the website under the guidance office, but if not, mom, dad, be sure to give a call to the counselor's office and ask for a copy of the high school profile. Yeah, it'll tell them that you're savvy and you know what you're doing, so they'll be sure to take your call next time, I promise, okay? All right, so that's tip number one. Now, why is that important, the high school profile? Again, episode 193, highly recommend going and listening to that along with 196. But here's the gist. There's a difference between a student who takes one honors or AP out of 20 that were offered at the high school versus the student who took five APs out of the five that were offered, okay? So again, we're understanding the context, demographics, racial break racial and ethnic background, lots of information on that school profile. And I promise you, once you find yours, you'll understand exactly why it's important to colleges. Okay, so here's tip number two. You want to get a family email, an email that is accessible for everyone to use and know the password for one email. And that's where everything for college should go into that email. Why? Because 
when students use their own email or their school email, it starts to clog up. And gosh, they get so many emails. Remember, they have five or six or sometimes seven different teachers, maybe coaches, that are all emailing on that school email. So it gets really clogged up. And a student only has so much bandwidth of how much they're going to open. So this is where mom and dad comes into, you know, really comes in handy. And most parents want a job, want a way to be helpful in this process. So let me tell you what you're going to do. First of all, your child, if they took the PSAT, they might be receiving emails um, and other real snail mail and emails. That's because College Board purchases the names of students who they want to, that either scored high enough in their range of who they're recruiting and or checked a box of interest, an interest that that school has to offer. So you might be getting snail mail or email or your child might be. And so you want to start opening those emails. Why? Because many colleges, not all, but many colleges are tracking the interest of students and clicking and going in there a little bit now can help to increase your chances of getting admitted later. So that's a hot tip. So mom and dad, the reason I say mom and dad can be helpful is because look, if it's all going to one main email, then while you know, you're doing something else, you can open it and open up the email, click around, sort of stay in there for a little bit. So it looks like you're interested. It looks like the student is interested. Okay. So open those emails. Don't let them just gather dust. Okay. Tip number three, I highly recommend meeting as a family one to two times a week. This is what I share with my private clients. Why? Because parents reframe from, I know you want to like ask, you're getting anxious. And so parents tend to like pepper the student with questions or with uh, ideas or with suggestions like every day or every other day. And it's just too much. The student especially while they're in school, they have so much going on. So um, schedule an appointment. Um, I know it sounds funny, but do that. And you can schedule twice a week for 20 to 25 minutes each or once a week for 50 to 60 minutes each. Um, this is usually like on a Sunday. And parents are going to ask three questions. You're going to ask, what are you working on? What's coming up? And how can I help? That's really all you need to ask and all of that will come out. Now, if you have your suggestions or you've been doing your own homework, or whatever, that's the time that you can share all of that in that meeting. Listen, at the end of the day, if you make this a habit, the student and your child will know, oh, okay, every Tuesday I'm going to get the these questions and they're going to want to have answers. Or they'll say, you know, I don't have any answer. I, you know, I didn't do anything. Sometimes it's a hard week at, at school and they just don't get too much done, but sometimes they're able to get something done. My recommendation is that everyone treat this like a part-time job, a temporary part-time job, and chip away at this every single week. So move the needle, in other words. So everyone can move the needle in some way. Now parents, when you ask the question, how can I help? I'm gonna guess that most of the time the student is gonna say, you know, nothing or I don't need any help. But just keep asking, don't take that question off the table because at some point they will ask for help because it's just too much. It does really does take a village and at first they think they can do it on their own. Um, for no other reason other than they've done everything else on there. If they've made it this far and, and they're a superstar in, in high school uh, and getting, doing everything and managing their grades and, and extracurriculars and all of that, of course, they would, they would have no reason to believe they couldn't do this on their own. But most students at some point need some help. So there you go. Um, let's see. So that is um, tip number three. Did I give you three questions? Yes. Okay. I have my little notes here. So my little cheat sheet. My tip number four, this is the last tip, and then I'll, t I'll share a few things. The last tip is, I have here, it says, get a coach. Now, many parents that are, I'm just going to say it, my age, um, because all my friends have uh, kids that are about to be high, uh, college age, or some of them already have kids that have, are, are off and gone to college. But let me just say this. Look, if you're, you know, you grew up in the 80s, maybe early 90s, you know, most of us, I didn't know a single person that had an, a coach, a college coach, a private coach. Now, I also went to a public school and, you know, we didn't have, uh, we didn't want for anything, but we didn't, you know, we, that wasn't something we were doing. I certainly didn't have any friends that were at private schools. So maybe that was a thing then. But by and large, we rolled out of bed, applied to a few schools, uh, got into our top school. That would happen to me. I mean, I literally rolled out of bed, took the SAT one time. 
Uh, my dream college was USC. I'm supporting it today. And I applied to uh, some other local um, in-state schools. But I was admitted to USC, and that was my dream. I didn't know if I was going to be admitted, but I was admitted, and then that was that was the end of the day. So that's not really the case anymore. You can't really roll out of bed, uh, take the SAT one time, and like have never given any thought and expect to be admitted to top 100 colleges or even top 300 colleges. Now, I say this because, parents, if this is news to you, uh, you're not alone, so don't feel bad that you didn't know, but now you do. So consider yourself lucky that you're watching and are listening to this episode and informing yourself. Because most of my friends at who, who went to USC, many of them were first generation to USC, and then they were like, oh my goodness, what am I gonna do with my kid? Like, what if they don't get into USC uh, or a place like that? So back when we applied, the colleges that today are nearly impossible to get into were in many ways sort of safety schools. I know USC was sort of known as like the university of second choice is what they used to call it. <laughs> um, so I didn't care because for me it was my dream college. But bottom line is you have to have a plan. And uh, there are plenty of colleges that your child will be admitted to. That's not why you're listening or watching this episode. If you found me, you found me because your child is dreaming or planning to apply to at least one top 100 college. Top 100 college are colleges that admit under 30% of their applicant pool. So in other words, for every 100 applications, they admit 30 or less. And the ones that you can name, right? Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Stanford, USC, UCLA, Notre Dame, Georgetown, Duke, Northwestern, Rice, all of those, they're all admitting under 15%. And I think by now they're at under 10%. So that's 10 applications for every 100. Yeah. And if you're in California, which is where we're based out of, our company's based out of California, five of the nine UC campuses receive over 100,000 freshman applications alone. UCLA, um, so far, last I checked, has is the largest, it is the public institution that receives the largest amount of applications every year, period. I, I think it might be even um, across the board. So I think NYU might be second, and that's private college. So... We're talking about a lot. So all I'm saying is you don't know what you don't know. And it's important that you find a coach. And what I'm saying is either you found me and so I'll be your coach by listening to this, by being on this YouTube channel or listening on podcasts. Um, maybe you get a book, maybe it was my book, maybe somebody else's book. Maybe you listen to multiple podcasts. Maybe you, you know, read blogs, but maybe you ask the neighbor, ask the family friend who's been through this process before recently. And I mean recent, like as in the last three-ish years, maybe five, but really you want to stick to someone who's been through this process about in the last three years, okay? So there is plenty of information. That's the good news and also the bad news, right? We have an enormous amount of, of, of information at our fingertips. So it can be get, it can get confusing, so I just want to share and say thank you for, for joining me today and honoring me with um, allowing me to coach you. I am someone who, I was first generation to college. My mom did not know how to help me get into college, so she found someone who did. She you know, found a way. She found a mentor for us, and we went to see him. His name is Mr. Vargas. I tell the story all the time. But now my goal and mission in life is to try and be the Mr. Vargas for everybody that I can. Mostly I work with public schools public school and Catholic school students. Why? Because when I worked at Vassar College and when I worked at Marymount High School, a private girls' school, both of those experiences exposed me to just how unequal the playing field is. So everything that I knew, that I grew to know and learned and gave uh, those girls at Marymount High School uh, the leverage they needed and deserved, sure, everybody deserves that, I mostly took all of that information from what I learned at Vassar and what I learned at Marymount and packaged that into my book, Be Committed, Get Admitted. And now I do this for you. So anyway, that's a long way of saying tip number four, get a coach of some sort that you know, like, and trust. Okay? Yeah. Just like anything, you need a good coach. All right. So here is what I'm going to leave you with. Um, First of all, if you found this helpful, I'd love it if you left a comment. I like to ask my private clients, on a scale of 1 to 10, 
how helpful was today. So please do comment your number in the comments so I can uh, grow and learn. And if you have a suggestion for another topic, I'd be happy to hear that in the comments. And by the way, as promised, um, I ha do have a gift for you. So I just said I'm a former college admission officer and also a private school counselor. So I am going to gift you this PDF that tells you and walks you through how the admission process works. So it's a little bit of behind the scenes. So here's how you get it. You're going to go to drcynthiacolon.com forward slash admit, just the word admit, A-D-M-I-T. Dr. Cynthia Colon is maybe where you get stuck, but it's basically uh, D-R-C-Y-N-T-H-I-A-C-O-L-O-N. Okay, drcynthiacolon.com forward slash admit, and there you will download the four questions admission officers ask when deciding to who to admit or reject. So it's actually one of my best pieces. Uh, so I highly recommend it. Okay. All right. So thanks for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, how to increase your chances of getting admitted to top colleges, if you liked it, please share this video or podcast with three people in the next 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, all right, so what else? Let me see. I'm looking at my notes here. And um, yeah, be, oh, yeah. So be sure to hit the notifications so that you don't miss any other trainings. So sound good? All right. Again, if you found value, share this episode with three people in the next 30 minutes. And anyway, thank you so much for joining me today. I'll be sure to see you next time, same time, same place. Until then, wherever you are, may you have a happy and sunny day. Bye for now. Here's the truth. For nearly 30 years, I have worked at elite private colleges and or private high schools. I know what well-resourced families do to ensure college success. And I can tell you, if your child is enrolled at a public or religious high school, chances are she or he is already five steps behind. However, today is your lucky day. To get you ahead of your private school peers, I have a gift for you. I'm revealing the exact admission committee process we used at Vassar. It's all in my new guide. Four questions admission officers ask when deciding who to admit or reject. You can go to drcynthiacolon.com forward slash admit to get your copy. I share the four questions I used in the 12 minutes I had to review the entire application. If you've ever wondered what admission officers are looking for and how decisions are actually made, you're not alone. Take action now to get five steps ahead and begin increasing those acceptance letters. Again, that's Dr. Cynthia Colon, D-R-C-Y-N-T-H-I-A-C-O-L-O-N.com forward slash admit. That is all I have for you today, my friends. Thank you for tuning in to Destination U University. I'm Dr. Cynthia Kwan. If this episode has in any way helped, fueled, or inspired you, please share this episode with three people in the next 30 minutes. You can subscribe to Destination U University wherever you get your podcast. And while you're there, leave us a review. It sure does help a lot. By subscribing and reviewing, you help to grow the community of informed families across the nation. And if you haven't binge listened to our previous seasons, do it. With each episode, you'll learn a new tip, trick, or strategy for success. Start with episode one, the one word every parent should remove. You'll learn my mom's secret to ensuring college success for her daughters. And once again, if you found value today, please share this episode with three families in the next 30 minutes. I'll be sure to see you next week, same time, same place. Until then, wherever you are, may you have a happy and sunny day. Bye for now. Thank you so much for listening this week to Destination University. Be sure to join Dr. Cynthia Colon again and get one step closer to your success. 